1961 Cadillac Sedan DeVille, and today I'll show you the exterior and interior of the car, and then take you for your drive. Welcome back to the channel. Before we get started with today's review, I'd like to thank all of you who have subscribed for subscribing. The channel has reached over 3,300 subscribers, which is such a big number, and I'm so excited to have even more people to watch these videos and to experience them with me. It's just so exciting to have all of you on board with the channel and to watch these videos, and I want to thank you all for your support. Anyways, today is a very, very special day because we have our first 60s car on the channel to review. And what better car to start off with than a 1961 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. This is an absolutely beautiful example of what a 60s Cadillac was like, and I can't wait to show you guys all of the features that this car came with, and exactly how it differs from many other Cadillacs that I brought on the channel to show you guys already. So, without further ado, let's get started. So starting at the front of the Cadillac Sedan DeVille, we of course have a big chrome grille as well as an even bigger chrome bumper, which uh, I would expect nothing less on a 60s Cadillac or a Cadillac in general. I'd also like just to point out the intricacy of the grille itself. There are just many different shapes in it. You have circles as well as rectangles, and just all that chrome just looks absolutely beautiful on the front of the car. It all reflects beautifully in the sun. I'd also like to point out that we do have, of course, a Cadillac badge on the front of the hood, and uh, it really remind, reminds me of uh, modern Cadillacs. Modern Cadillacs have kind of used a similar looking crest on their new cars, and they've also used the V badge to signify their performance vehicles. So I think it's really neat that Cadillac is using modern interpretations of what is on this car. Now taking a closer look at the front fender of the Sedan DeVille, there are a few notable things to mention here. First of all, we do have a DeVille badge here, kind of interesting placement on the front of the car. I don't think I've seen that on other Cadillacs that I've reviewed or other vehicles in general. And some of you big Cadillac fans may have already noticed, but below the DeVille badge, there is no cornering light. Cadillac didn't introduce cornering lights on the Sedan DeVille until 1962, the year after this car, and it would be placed right here where this interesting chrome piece is with those fins. I didn't know that 1961 cars did not have cornering lights, but that is one way to tell apart a 1961 Cadillac from the 62 Sedan DeVilles. And also looking at the wheels of the Sedan DeVille, I do like how the wheels have incorporated the same body color as the actual car itself. This car is painted in a beautiful Dresden blue color, as Cadillac calls it, and I like that the wheel covers match the exterior color of this car. But what is really cool about these wheel covers and the Cadillac crest specifically on them is that this Cadillac crest has black paint on it. It's not all silver. I think it's really interesting. It helps the rest of the emblem stand out, and most people would never notice that these Cadillac badges have black paint on them. And also on the top of the fender here, almost on the hood of the car, is this little chrome piece that is sticking up. Inside of that chrome piece is actually an orange bulb that lights up to show when your turn signals are on. And it's also interesting to note that the 70s Cadillacs and later on had fiber optic cables to show when the lights are working. However, this is just a light bulb inside of the chrome piece. Now moving along to the side of this Sedan DeVille, we can see exactly just how big this car is. It is about 222 inches long. Definitely not the longest car I've shown on this channel, but it is still massive. Secondly, this car was also called a four-window Sedan DeVille. Cadillac also made what was called a six-window Sedan DeVille at this time as well, which had a different roof design and also had an extra vent window here in the back for the rear passengers. But I think I actually prefer the four-window version better because of this flat top roof. It also has an absolutely beautiful pane of glass that wraps around the entire back of the car, which is absolutely massive. It's even bigger than the windshield up front, and it just gives such an interesting view for the passengers inside of the vehicle. But Cadillac, of course, made many different versions of the DeVille. They had, of course, a Coupe DeVille. They had convertible versions. Very interesting car and very cool that Cadillac had so many different varieties of this one DeVille. So several of the most noteworthy things over here on the side of the car, we do have a power antenna there for the radio, as well as door locks even for the passenger. They can unlock the car on this side to get in. And speaking of opening up the doors, I'd actually like to do that to show you guys just how solid they are. 
when you press the handle, it feels absolutely fantastic opening and closing it. And then when you do want to close the door, it makes such a satisfying clunk. I mean, it really does feel extremely sturdy. And I'd say it's probably the sturdiest door I've seen uh, just on any car that I've reviewed so far. Even compared to modern Cadillacs, it just has this metallic, sturdy, quality feel that you just don't get anymore on cars. And it just feels so nice on this particular example. And I'd also like to mention, there's actually no B pillar in between the two panes of glass here on this car. So if you lower all the windows on this vehicle, it's just a pillarless opening right here. Very easy to see out of and very unique. I wish that modern cars had a pillarless opening here when you open the windows, but I'm sure because of safety standards, car manufacturers just simply can't do it anymore. But it's so cool to see on this car. Now while I'm on the side of the car here, I'd like to mention that this vehicle actually has two tail fins on each side of the car. Let me explain. First of all, we do have our normal Cadillac tail fin where we'd all expect it to be, right on the top of the car on the rear fender. And it actually starts way over here on the front doors of the vehicle. The metal is uh, protruded a little bit there to show the start of the Cadillac tail fin. And of course, it goes all the way to the back of the car. It comes to a point and I could see someone uh, running into the back of the car getting impaled by that thing. I don't wanna be running around this car because I might get seriously hurt. But we do have a second tail fin on this side of the car called a skeg. And it actually starts here on the front fender of the vehicle just behind the front tires. And it goes all the way down the side of the car to the back. And it's another fit tail fin, but it's kind of pointed more towards the ground. It is absolutely beautiful and I love the attention to detail that Cadillac put towards this vehicle to make it look just like an airship or something that should be flying. But it's so cool to see more than one tail fin on each side of the car. Very unique and very cool to see. Now moving on to the back end of the 61 Sedan DeVille. This is of course where the tail fins and the skegs end. They of course all come to four points on the end of the car here. The skegs are all complete in chrome and of course the bumper is all chrome as well. It seems to mimic the front end of the car of course with that chrome bumper which I like very much. I also do like the horizontal brake lights as well as the brake lights in the tail fins. I love that so, so much. I'll actually show you guys a quick video to show you guys what they look like when they light up. Absolutely beautiful. I love how bright they are and just how they look in the fins. It's so cool how modern Cadillacs have similar tail lights to that. Just the same strip of light and I just love that this car has that. And what is very cool and what many other older Cadillacs have also done is they have hidden the fuel door for this car. The fuel door is actually just above the bumper here. It flips up in a very unique way, which I haven't seen Cadillacs do. Usually it's actually behind the license plate in some of the 70s models up through the 90s. But it's cool to see that they actually hit it in that particular spot, which I wouldn't have expected. Now, of course, above the fuel door, we also have the same Cadillac badge here on the back of the trunk as we do on the front of the car. And also, let's open up the trunk. I have uh, the keys here, which I'll show you guys here in a minute but you can open it up just with the key right here in the back. Turn the key and then open up the trunk. Taking a closer look at the inside of the trunk, we do have a decent amount of space. It does go back pretty far and you do almost have like a hump back there near the rear seats to actually put stuff on top of if you wanted to. We do have though a large spare tire back here which takes up a good amount of space in the trunk. We do also have a car jack over there on the right as well, which you can use to jack up the car to put on the spare tire if you had to. Uh, we do have directions here on how to use the jack on the car in case if you do get a flat, because many cars back then did get flats all the time, very common. And now to close the trunk, you do have to slam it, which is quite unfortunate, but trunk pull down was not available on 1961 Cadillac, so it's okay that it doesn't have it, but I do wish that that feature was available back then. Next, let's take a look under the hood and see what is powering the 1961 Sedan DeVille. So we do have a pull handle right underneath the Cadillac badge here. Pull it up and then you can push the hood all the way up like so, which is actually quite easy to do. Uh, the current owner of this car has actually done a lot of work to make sure that this hood is actually quite sturdy. Uh, with new parts it's all lubricated nicely so it's actually pretty easy to open even though it is relatively heavy but what is really neat about opening this hood which i didn't know and i did not expect is that there's no pull handle on the inside of the car to release it all you have to do is come up 
press that handle on the outside of the car and it opens. So that means that anyone walking down the street can just open up the hood of your 61 Sedan DeVille without even having to get inside of the car. So that's something interesting uh, to make note of. I'm surprised that there wasn't some safety feature to prevent people from doing that. So anyways, underneath the hood we have the 390 cubic inch four barrel V8 which produced about 325 horsepower and a healthy 430 pound-feet of torque. Really impressive numbers. Uh, Cadillacs back then, these V8s and GM V8s, just about everyone back then, made a lot of engine power with what they had. Uh, you didn't get necessarily very good fuel economy, but you always had the power when you needed it to move these extremely heavy cars. And that's what makes a big difference between many of the 70s cars I've shown you guys. Most of those cars were extremely underpowered, they did not perform very well, they weren't very responsive, but this engine was all of that, and that's just because of the regulations back then. They didn't have to be very economical, they didn't have to be uh, environmentally friendly, so that's what you could do with these engines back then. Very impressive to see that underneath the hood of this car. Now just taking a closer look at the engine compartment itself, there is plenty of room under here. Looks really neat. I also really love this about older cars. The windshield washer fluid was always in what looked to be just like a metal or glass jar. Really neat to see it in this car. Looks very antique, but very fitting for the era that this car is made in. Also what's neat is that the engine also has Cadillac lettering in blue on the side of it. Uh, pretty neat to see. Just such a cool area to look underneath. Uh, of course, very different from modern cars. No plastic in here whatsoever, just the engine, just the parts, everything you do want to see. In case if you all were interested in hearing what the 61 Sedan DeVille sounds like, here it is. Now real quick before we step inside of the 1961 Sedan DeVille, I'd like to show you guys the keys that came with the car. Now first of all we do have our round key which was used to unlock all the doors as well as the trunk which is pretty neat to see. And we also have what is, looks like a hexagonal uh, type key which is used to of course start the car. And I'm surprised it's more of a hexagonal shape, I would have expected it to be more of a, a square. Uh, like other Cadillacs from uh, similar time periods, but this one is a hexagon, which is pretty neat, and those are the keys to the car. Now that we've taken a good look at the exterior of the 61 Sedan DeVille, let's take a look at the interior and see what it's like. So, taking a look at the interior of this Sedan DeVille, my oh my is it beautiful in here. There's just such a wide variety of materials, fabrics, leathers used everywhere throughout the door panel, the dashboard, the seats. True craftsmanship at work here. I absolutely love it. There really isn't much uh, to complain about as far as the looks of it, the materials. It's all really fantastic and truly top notch. It uh, really makes me think, wow, this is what a Cadillac is supposed to be. This is what it's supposed to look like and feel like. The interior is also colored to match the exterior of the car. It, I believe this interior color was actually called Blue Cromwell. It definitely looks nice and matches the aesthetic of this car. Now taking a look at the door panel here. Of course, like I mentioned before, a wide variety of materials here. We have leather, cloth, carpeting, and real metal on the door. Um, and also this really interesting design. Um, on the door handle here and right behind it. I'm not sure exactly what that material is, but it has a really intricate looking design on it. It uh, definitely looks like a 60s design, but that's okay, nothing wrong with that. And everything that you're going to touch often, including the door handle, the window switches, the seat controls, it's all made of metal. Very high quality, it's going to last for a very long time, as it already has. Um, so really, everything here is just absolutely beautiful. I love everything about it, and I'm so glad that Cadillac used such a variety of materials just to make the door and the rest of the interior really stand out and look truly beautiful. 
And speaking of the door, we also do have controls for the vent window there. It's a manual control here on this car. We also do have our mirror adjuster there. We can use that little lever to uh, adjust the mirror as we please. Next, let's get in the seat and see just how comfortable it is. Ooh. All right, there we go. So, uh, of course, there's a bench seat up front and in the back. Uh, you don't have exactly captain's chairs or single uh, chairs up front, but that's okay. We do have an armrest in this seat, which does make it much more comfortable than it otherwise would be. And like I mentioned before, we do have power seat controls on the door here. Very easy to reach, very easy to use. The seats here are still very soft. I feel very comfortable. Of course, no headrest though. Uh, the seat doesn't tilt back or anything like that, but that's okay. I didn't expect it to. Um, definitely a very comfortable place to be as a driver and I'm sure as a passenger as well. And what's really neat about this weird looking pattern that Cadillac used on the door here is that they actually used it again on the sides of the seats. That's somewhere that most people would never look, but you can look and see that they actually paid attention to put that material there on the side just to make it look extra special. Very cool attention to detail on Cadillac's part. But before we get any further with the interior of this car, I do want to go through the original window sticker that came with this car and all the options that it came with. Um, so just to go through some of the options, uh, this car did have the optional six-way front seat adjuster. It would have otherwise have come with just an automatic forward and back seat. It came with white sidewall tires, which believe it or not was an option. It did come with a heater, which was also very surprisingly an option. I can't believe that a Cadillac, even in 1961, had optional heaters. I mean, imagine today, a car without a heater. What happens in wintertime? I mean, I don't know how people could have done that. We do have our radio here, which was a option. And here's a really interesting one called Easy Eye Glass. This car actually has slightly tinted windows all around to make it easier for people to look outside of their car. It reduces heat as well as glare on the interior of the car. So if you kind of look through the window, you can see a little bit of a blue hint. So that's what that is. Very interesting uh, and futuristic technology there with the Easy Eye Glass. And a fun fact about the glass with this car, it was actually made in Rossford, Ohio, very close to where I live in Libby Owens Ford. They have a, a big factory up there. They made pretty much all the glass for uh, many General Motors vehicles back in the day, which is really cool. Um, we do also have door guards on this car, which is this little strips of chrome on the edge of the doors, just so when you fling your door open and slam into the car beside you, you don't damage your own vehicle, you damage theirs. So uh, that's the reason for that. And we do have our power headlamp control option as well. So with all the options, it adds up to about $600 more over the base price. And the base price, believe it or not, was only $5,500 roughly. And the total of this car is about $6,102. So very interesting stuff. And I thought you guys would be interested to see this. I'll also put a picture of this um, window sticker on the screen for you guys to see in case you want to take a closer look at it. Feel free to do so. So taking a look ahead of me, I do have my instrument cluster here. I have my speedometer, tripometer, odometer, everything you'd expect to see. This particular car has just over 40,000 miles on it. Very low mileage, very good shape. Of course, I can have uh, see my temperature gauge on the left, my fuel gauge on the right. Um, definitely not an overabundance of information, pretty much everything you'd expect and want to see. On the left, I have my light controls. If I pull out the lever, my lights will turn on, push it back in, the lights will turn back off. And below the light switch, there is something here that says ventilation. Most people might guess, oh, is that just a weird way of saying air conditioning? Well, no, this car still doesn't have air conditioning. That actually opens up these louvers in the sides of the car to allow air to come in and flow into the cabin. What's neat are there are openings on the left and right by the driver's and passenger's feet. You can open up either side as the driver and allow more air into the cabin to keep it cooler during a summer day. And what's also really interesting is that if this car did come with air conditioning, Cadillac actually says that the air conditioner and heater could be used at the same time. The reason for that is to keep the cabin warm with the heater turned on, but to have cool air blowing above you and at your face essentially make it easier for you to breathe because it's harder to breathe in just warm air. I think that's really smart and I think that's something that modern cars can't really do, or at least don't say that they can do for convenience and to make you more comfortable. And besides air conditioning, there are a few other options that I wish this car would have had. First of all, I really wish that this car would have had a passenger door mirror. Some of these 61 Cadillacs did come with them, but this one was not option to have one. So it's kind of tough when you go to parallel park, if you're driving up next to a curb, you can't really see it that well because you don't have a mirror. So I do wish that was there. And the other option that I wish this car had was cruise control. 
Cruise control makes trips so much more easy. Definitely a really nice feature to have, and this car unfortunately is missing it. So although this car is missing many options that I personally would have gotten if I was buying this car, this actually reflects a lot of the mentality that people had back then about car options. Many people figured it was just one more thing that would break that they'd have to fix or pay for down the road. They just didn't think they needed stuff like air conditioning or cruise control. And that's one of the reasons why this car just doesn't have nearly as many options as most modern cars would. And then below the ventilation levers, I have my controls for my windshield wipers. These of course are very simple, you just have low, medium, or high, or off. Uh, they did not have delay wipers at this point, so you don't have delay wipers. And you also have a button that sprays the windshield, so you can clean off your windshield if you had to. Then to the right of my ventilation controls, I have my heater controls. I can turn on the defroster if I had to, or the defogger, de-icer, everything right there, and I can control exactly how much heat comes out. I also have my fan controls directly to the right of that. And then, what's really interesting to see is that Cadillac has written out their name right in the middle of the dashboard. And then above the Cadillac script is the radio. Very simple to use. You do have a tuning knob as well as a volume control knob. We do have a wonder bar on this radio as well, which is nice to see. So you can just scan through your different radio stations that are stronger or less strong depending on what you want to hear. And something that's really interesting about the radio is when you turn it on, the power antenna does not come up on its own. What you have to do is actually have to push in the speaker button the speaker knob and it'll raise the antenna and then when you want to put the antenna back down you just pull on that same button and then it'll automatically lower it. And to the right of the radio is the clock in the car which looks absolutely beautiful. It's made out of metal, a lot of glass, it looks very three-dimensional and I can't say I've ever seen a clock in another Cadillac that looks just as good as this one. And also directly in front of me we have of course this big steering wheel. What's really cool is that it is multicolored. it matches the darker and lighter blue colors on the interior of the car. But my favorite part about the steering wheel is the Cadillac emblem in the middle of it. It's surrounded by this red glass on the inside of it and it makes it look very three-dimensional. It's absolutely beautiful, so cool to look at. But I don't have a horn button right in the middle of the steering wheel. I actually have two little buttons right where my thumbs would be on the stalks of the steering wheel. But I guess in a way it's actually easier to reach. You don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel to reach those buttons. You can just use your thumbs and press the uh, horn lever whenever you have to. And otherwise, there isn't too much anything special with the steering wheel. We just have our turn signal lever here as well as our gear selector. Uh, the steering wheel does not have any sort of tilt or telescoping function. This stays in place, which is a little bit of a disappointment, but I've just assumed that that technology really wasn't available back then. But um, otherwise, it's a nice big steering wheel, comfortable to use and easy to use. And there's a really interesting quirk with the layout of the gears in front of the steering wheel here. As you can see, it says park, neutral, drive, low, and then reverse. On modern cars, it usually goes park, reverse, neutral drive. So it's actually really interesting. The reverse gear is all the way to the right. So when you want to back up, you got to go all the way over to the right instead of what you're normally used to, which is just going over once and then going over again for drive. Very different from today's cars. It's a little bit confusing to get used to. I have to make sure that I'm actually putting the car in the correct gear because I naturally just want to go over once from park to go into reverse. So kind of interesting that they did that. Also, because the turn signal indicators on the hood worked in the nighttime as well as the daytime, Cadillac figured they didn't need to put any turn signal indicators on the dashboard in front of the driver. So when you're using your turn signal, all you have to do is look on the hood rather than directly in front of you to see if your turn signals are on or if they're working. And they probably figured it was easier to see it that way since so you don't have to take your eyes off of the road. And then on the passenger side of the dashboard, there's a lot of metal here. There's the Cadillac badge right in the center of all that metal. It truly looks beautiful. And on the top of the dashboard here is a really interesting looking device which was called Guidematic. This actually adjusted the high beams of your car when another vehicle was coming towards you at nighttime. It would sense the high beams, automatically dim them for you, and then it would also turn the high beams back on after the car passes you. Um, it's not the best technology in the world, it's not doesn't work perfectly, not like modern cars, but still really cool to see. Cadillac actually implemented this on some of their 50s Cadillacs, and it was also used throughout the 70s and 60s as well, but Cadillac was able to implement this device into the grills of their cars, so it's not protruding in the dashboard like this. So, very cool technology, definitely ahead of its time. And speaking of the high beams, the way to actually turn on the high beams in this car is with a button on the floor by the driver's left foot. If you press that button, the high beams will turn on, and if you press it again, the high beams will turn off. Really interesting thing that cars used to have back then, up until the 70s. It's kind of strange that cars at least don't have full floor buttons for any reason today, but they got rid of that, but it's kind of cool to see that on this car. 
Now another really strange quirk about this car, which is very different from modern cars, is that when you go to start your car, you start it like normal, turn the key, but when you turn it off, if you go all the way to the left position with the key, that's when it's in accessory mode. So that's when you can still use the lights, turn, put up and down the windows, all that stuff you normally expect. But what's strange is that it's all the way on the left instead of in the middle. Because when you'd want to turn off the car, you may accidentally go all the way to the left. And the key does come out when you have it in accessory mode. So you may leave it on accessory mode, pull out the key, and then you end up coming back later with a dead battery. So it's very strange that accessory mode is on the way, all the way to the left. You actually have to leave the key in the middle so it won't run your battery down. Very strange design. And what I also really like, which really confirms that this car was made in the 60s, is that you have two ashtrays up here and two cigarette lighters. They're both in the dashboard. Both people, occupants up front, or all three, can easily reach it. There's also a mirror here in the center of the windshield, of course. What's really cool is it's actually on this really cool looking piece of chrome. Runs right down the middle and is holding the mirror in place. Really beautiful. But, you may have noticed there's actually a little lever at the bottom here which says day. If you flip it, it then says night and the mirror adjusts slightly. That's so then when you're driving the car at nighttime, if you have a car with high beams or lights on behind you, you flip it and it automatically reduces the glare from the headlights behind you so you aren't blinded by the lights. A lot of modern cars do have similar features and it's so cool to see that Cadillac did this in the 60s. Many of the cars that I showed you guys from the 70s also used that same technology. And above me, there really isn't anything too special. We do have normal visors here to block the sun. The passenger is the only one who actually gets a mirror. However, there is no light with the mirror so you have to have a light on yourself if you want to see yourself at nighttime. We do also have a very large glove box in the dashboard. When you press the button, it automatically opens up. You have a lot of room in there for all of your papers and whatever else you have, maybe your uh, owner's manual. Really cool to see, pretty deep. And the last thing to mention about the dashboard is that we do have one map light here in the middle. There's a little switch to turn it on and off. And that's the, really the only light you have up front to see yourself. So that's kind of interesting, but uh, it is there, so it is helpful to use at nighttime. There's also a really interesting badge on the passenger side of the front bench seat. This says interior by Fleetwood and body by Fisher. They're the ones that built this car. And what's really strange is that it's on the passenger side and the passenger side only. I'd imagine they'd want to at least put it on the driver's side so the driver, every time they get in and out, they'll see it rather than your passenger. And so I'm very curious as to why they did that. So if you know the answer, please comment down below and let me know because it's very interesting that they made that decision. Now there's another strange oddity about this car that I'd like to point out. As you can see on the seat back, there's a strip of leather that runs right down the middle on both sides. But what's strange is that some later 1961 Sedan DeVilles did not have these strips of leather on the seat backs. For whatever reason, some of the cars made after this one did not have it at a particular point throughout the year. So I don't know why Cadillac got rid of it. So that's one way for you to tell between some of the 1961 model year Sedan DeVilles. All right, now that we've checked out the front seat, Let's hop in the back and see what it's like back there. Okay. All right, now in the back seat, this is actually a really nice place to be. The seats are just as comfortable as the front. The materials are just as nice. You still have all the metals, the cloths, the leathers. Everything is just the same as in the front. Definitely not bad at all. And unsurprisingly, both rear passengers here do have an ashtray as well as a cigarette lighter, so you can still smoke back here. There are handles in front of me in the seat back to help the rear passengers get in and out of the car. We do have a light up here on the ceiling, a clothes hanger here on both sides so you can hang up your uh, dry cleaning if you had to. You still have window controls, you have really nice metal door opener here. Very nice to use, feels very clunky. It opens and closes the door really well. But my favorite part about being back here is the glass in the back. That's what's so special about the four window sedans is that they came with this huge pane of glass. Extremely impressive, very cool to look out of. It truly doesn't even look like anything is there. It looks like I can just reach my hand right through it and see out into the open world. What's really cool is even through around the curves of the glass, there isn't much distortion to the outside world. They did a great job of making it feel very natural and yet beautiful. Very impressive for the 60s technology to be able to do that. So, now that we've finished looking at the exterior and interior of the 1961 Sedan DeVille, let's go ahead and take it for a drive. Okay. <laughs> 
driving the 1961 Cadillac Sedan DeVille and wow is this exciting. I've been really excited to drive Cadillacs from many different eras, different decades, because I know that different decades are probably, probably just so different from others that I'm so used to. And in the channel we've driven you know, Cadillacs from the 70s, 90s, 2000s, and uh, it's really interesting to see the difference between uh, those cars and to really compare and contrast and to see where the brand has gone in, in those years, but it's so cool to go back uh, even before the 70s to the 60s to see exactly what that's like. And really right away I can tell some differences clearly between the 70s Cadillacs that I've driven. Um, really this car feels very responsive, the steering feels much more responsive, the throttle, the engine, it's all more more of a tactile feel. You feel the car and what it's doing, you feel more of the road, and in many ways it's a good thing, in many ways it's uh, not, not as good. Um, I do like how it is very responsive, I feel more confident driving this car, it honestly feels smaller than I think what it actually is, uh, it feels smaller than the 70s Cadillacs that I've driven, um, and overall I just, it kind of makes me feel more confident driving it that I know exactly how the car is going to react if I take a turn, if I have to go around another bend or something. Um, it always feels like I know what it's going to do. And some 70s Cadillacs, you know, you move the steering wheel, the thing barely moves, but this actually does react more to that than the 70s cars. The ride is also not nearly as uh, bowdy and like, completely smooth as the 70s cars. Don't get me wrong, this ride is still fantastic. It still is very soft over bumps, um, but I do still feel the road a bit more than I would normally in a 70s car. It doesn't waft as much. And in many ways, that's something that the 70s Cadillacs truly can't be beat at. They always have just a brilliant ride, um, and they're always just so fantastic, fantastically comfortable. Um, the seats are generally, I think, softer than the seats in this car, especially like the Eldorado Brits I brought you guys with the poofy seats. Those are truly unmatched, and uh, that's definitely something I like. But also, those cars are just in many ways more difficult to drive. What is also interesting to notice is that uh, this car does have a lot more power than those 70s Cadillacs that I've shown you guys. I mean, this has over 300 horsepower, over 400 pound-feet of torque. Uh, the Baritz I showed you guys <laughs> probably had about half that. Really, it wasn't nearly as powerful, and I wouldn't be surprised if that Baritz was just as heavy as this car. Um, I'd say it's probably just about as long. Um, so it's really interesting how at a time when Cadillac and all the engineers, all the other brands weren't restricted, by something such as uh, government policies or the environment restrictions. Um, it's very interesting to see how that really changed the cars going from this to that era in the 70s. Something else that is <laughs> missing from these cars, which has been in every single other car I've reviewed, are seat belts. <laughs> this car does not have seat belts. Um, it may have been an option, I uh, can't remember at the top of my head, um, but this car doesn't currently have seat belts. But I gotta hope that I'm heavy enough that whoever I crash into, if I do crash, uh, I end up being bigger than them, so <laughs> that's something to keep in mind. But what I do really like about this car also, safety-wise, is the visibility. It's uh, truly fantastic. Um, and speaking of the rear glass, I've never driven a car where when I look in the mirror, I only see glass. I, right now, looking in the mirror, I can't see the roof, I can't see the seat, I can't see the B-pillar back there uh, by the rear seat. I've never had an experience like that because of that wraparound glass. It's so easy to see out of. If I turn my head, I have an unobstructed view of everything around me, which is really unique and uh, so cool to see. It's just such a unique experience. And in many ways, this car truly does, like I said before, it feels small. It drives and looks and feels smaller than it actually is. I mean, looking over the hood, it doesn't really have as intimidating of a look as many of the other Cadillacs are that I drove which is uh, in many ways a benefit. I think it's just easier to drive. It doesn't quite have the, maybe in some ways the same road presence, not quite as large, but it's still pretty neat to see. And something else to point out is that this car has, uh, all four wheels have drum brakes. So no disc brakes on this car. It's uh, a little bit surprising. I was kind of expecting uh, that it would have at least front discs, but I guess at this time Cadillac or other car makers didn't do that, which is uh, uh, pretty funny to see. But you do kind of have to uh, plan for your stops. Uh, the owner of this car told me that. He said, you got to plan ahead with the, uh, with the drum brakes, and he's right. I will say the car is definitely do, still doing a little bit of wafting. <laughs> or 
over those bumps it actually felt a little bit like a like a Cadillac boat which is a good thing that's uh, that's how Cadillacs should feel <laughs> You know, there's so much metal in here that I'm afraid on a sunny day, it's going to be hard to look out of this thing. You'll need sunglasses with all the uh, reflections everywhere. <laughs> What's also super cool about driving this car is that this car has the biggest tail fins of any car that I've reviewed so far. And what's awesome is when I look in the mirror, that's like the only thing I see besides what's behind me are those fins. It makes me feel like I am in an airplane, like I'm slicing, slicing through the air and just cutting through. I mean, that's just such an awesome feeling, and I try to imagine what exactly the first owner of this car must have thought when they bought it. I mean, they must have thought they're on top of the world. They've got the coolest machine that man can buy that you can get on the road. I mean, that's that's just so cool. And the car still evokes those same feelings, even now, even though it's, you know, over 50 years old. It's going on 60, at least. Actually, 60 this year, 1961, 2021. I mean, that's crazy. And this car really is just fun to drive. And that's not because it's a sports car, not because it takes turns like a Corvette or something. Uh, just because of the looks of the car. It really comes from from an era that you really don't see uh, too much of anymore. I mean, you see, I think I see more 70s cars than many other types. We don't see too many Cadillacs like this. I mean, this kind of shape and that are this good looking, to me at least. And I think that's a really really big deal. I think uh, people like seeing it. It's a very unique modern design from the 60s, at least in uh, interpretation of what uh, the modern era would look like. And I think that really reflects a lot about what this car is about. I think that the designers, um, the people who made this car, who built it, they really had a true inspiration to make an extremely high quality car that was just unlike anything else you'd ever find. And there's just nothing like this car on the road today. Just everything about the interior of this car, the exterior, there was a true craftsmanship involved. And that's something that I think a lot of 60s cars had, a lot of 50s cars had, 40s cars. This, this car was really just uh, one of the last of its kind, really. Um, I do love 70s Cadillacs, but they, to me, just don't quite have the same style as this car. And in a way, it's actually kind of refreshing to drive a Cadillac like this from the 60s because not everything is a square or a rectangle. It's kind of funny, just about the only things on a 70s Cadillac that isn't a square are the wheels. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the only round things you'll find on the car. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but to me, uh, there's just a lot more inspiration involved in the design and the looks and the features of this car. It's just a very impressive vehicle in many different ways and I'm so glad that I had the experience to drive a car like this one from this era. It's, it's, it's unlike anything else, and if you like these cars, if you've never ridden in one of these cars, you've never driven one of these cars, take the chance to. They're, they're really beautiful, they're well engineered, and they're just great fun to drive. I'd love to hear what you guys think of 60s Cadillacs versus 70s, if you've had any experience with either, or compared to other car brands. I'd love to hear if any of you guys are Lincoln owners of Lincolns from this time. It would still be really neat to know exactly what you guys think of those, because I personally haven't driven um, Lincolns from uh, this era, or any era, actually. I haven't drink driven a Lincoln yet, but hopefully someday I'll be able to get one on the channel, and uh, maybe, it'll, uh, maybe it'll change me over to a Lincoln fan. We'll see. I, I doubt it, but... If it's that good, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching my video. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and to come back again soon for more videos. Thank you. <laughs>
Moving on to the back of the 61 Sedan DeVille, this is of course where the tail fins and the skegs meet. Meet? It's such an interesting experience driving this car when I'm already so used to driving many 70s cars. And I don't know what this truck... Okay, good, he's pulling in. Wow. Sorry, this guy's driving on my side of the road and I was worried for a second that he wasn't gonna stop. There's an airplane literally rolling around us. I don't know if he's like practicing something else or if he's actually sees us. That would be kind of cool. Now I lost him. I don't know where he went. I see him. There he goes. <laughs> That's funny. 